Today, we are also following developments in the state of Oklahoma. In just a few weeks, Joseph Maldonado Passage, better known as Joe Exotic or Tiger King, is expected to be back in court for resentencing. Now, earlier this year, you might recall a federal appellate court ruled that Joe Exotic should get a shorter prison sentence for his role in a murder for hire plot and for violating federal wildlife laws. So in January of 2020, he was sentenced to 22 years in prison. He filed an appeal, uh, which said essentially that the murder for hire convictions should have been overturned. Now, he, the argument par in part was that Carol Baskin was allowed to attend the whole trial, his arch nemesis, even though she was classified as a government witness uh, and should have been uh, uh, sequestered. Now, the appeal also says that the murder for hire plots should not have been separated because they, quote, involved the same victim. So the uh, panel of judges agreed, saying that the district court made an error by not grouping together those sentencing, uh, those convictions at the time of sentencing. Let's take a look back together now at the case of the blonde mullet rock and zookeeper known as Tiger King. Tiger King, it's the number one streaming program on Netflix. <laughs> Most of the seven part series focuses on the imprisoned Oklahoma zookeeper known as Joe Exotic. Hey, I'm Joe Exotic, otherwise known as a Tiger King, the gay gun carrying redneck with a motor. I live here at the zoo with over a thousand exotic animals and I treat every one of them like they're my kin. The staff saw firsthand what the conditions were like when they picked up the animals in late 2017. The small enclosures, the indiscriminate breeding, the cub experiences, the exploitation. Um, so all of that was very apparent when we were on the rescue. He came up with the 410 in his hand, and I knew he just shot cuddles. I heard it, and he come up the hill and goes, D -A -A Eric. If I knew it was going to be this easy, just walk right up to the cage, I'll go cool, kill them all. Joseph Mononato Passage, better known as Joe Exotic, stands accused in federal court Monday in a murder for hire plot. He was indicted on two counts in September. But it was years ago when federal prosecutors say he began posting threats on YouTube and Facebook like this one. You want to know why Carol Baskin better never, ever, ever see me face to face? Ever, ever, ever again. Just because there's a difference between between saying you want somebody dead and, and actually going to the lengths that he did on his show to shoot a blow up doll, um, we never never questioned that he wanted her dead. Federal prosecutors say at the heart of the case, revenge. Carol Baskin, the owner of Big Cat Rescue in Florida, sued Maldonado Passage in 2011 for trademark infringement. Maldonado Passage was ultimately ordered to pay $1 million. Carol Baskin, owner of Tampa's Big Cat Rescue, is also prominently featured. Carol is the mother Teresa of cats. Including accusations that she killed her former husband, Don Lewis. I never have ever heard of anyone that crafted a will that said in my disappearance of kidnapping, leave my money, my entire sum of my fortune to this individual. Baskin and her current husband Howard say they were duped by Tiger King's producers into thinking the series would be about stopping the abuse of big cats. As far as I can tell, their only goal was to make something as inflammatory and salacious as possible so that Netflix would pay them millions for it. They've also set up a web page detailing what they say are the lies told in the Netflix documentary series. They said the mound dirt was delivered on the 14th, which means that septic system was fully installed on the 14th or the 15th at the latest. And they told me if there was ever a time to dispose of a body in a septic system, that's the time to do it. Well, we have a very special guest joining us on the program today. We have Joe Exotic's attorney on the program. He's joining us from Jacksonville, Florida, where he practices civil rights work. Attorney John Phillips, a friend of Court TV. Always great to talk to you, John. And it's been a while uh, since we talked. I think the last time I, I spoke to you uh, on camera, and I know, of course, see what you're doing on social media and all that. It's great to stay in touch with you there. But you were representing Don Lewis's family. And I remember thinking, I wonder if you'll talk to Joe Exotic. I think we talked a little bit about that, and you were saying, yeah, we'd be open to talking. So catch us up. How did this, this happen with you becoming his attorney? It's been a crazy, you know, we, it feels like we all watched Tiger King, the first version, four years ago. You know, it was a year and a half. And so the first 
several months, so about October, August to October, I represented the family. Then they went in a different di direction uh, related to real estate. Uh, they're, they're investigating Carol's real estate transactions. Um, Ann McQueen, remember we filed a lawsuit. Ann McQueen's Don's assistant still involved with that lawsuit. Uh, we recently had a hearing about whether her, her defamation lawsuit should be uh, dismissed for slap, a uh, strategic lawsuit against public participation. We expect to prevail on that and then move on to discovery. Come January of this year, this you know, 2021 now, uh, Joe Exotic emailed not just once, but about a hundred times and went <laughs> through his case with me. And so as, as I say in Tiger King 2, you know, I put on the hat in the, in the, in the, in the sequel and say, I guess I've been traded. And so from about February or March of 2021 <laughs> to present day, I've represented Joe Exotic. And, you know, from the moment I walked into the Fort Worth Medical Center, the federal prison there in Dallas, Fort Worth area, uh, and saw the tattooed eyeliner and he still has the mullet. You know, you, you saw the, the character Joe Exotic, but the, the man, Joseph Maldonado, Joseph Maldonado Passage, uh, is, is a real, you know, like all of us, he's a real person. He, he's, he's been locked up for, for three or four years. Uh, there's, there was certainly government misconduct, uh, ineffective assistance of counsel, and some new evidence. So uh, over the course of the nine months, we've met with Jeff Lowe and Lauren Lowe and Alan Glover and James Gerritsen and John Rinke, all the characters people got to know in Tiger King 1, and they all you know, gave me a, a Lee Corso. Well, not so fast, right? So there was there was more to the story, and we've put together affidavits, filed them with the court, and even Alan Glover, the alleged hitman, admitted to perjury during the federal trial. So that's certainly a new development. Oh yes, John. These are big big problems. Everything you mentioned, you mentioned government misconduct, new evidence, ineffective assistance of counsel. Um, for, for those who are following this case really interested and didn't get to see the trial play out because it was a federal case, we know cameras aren't allowed in federal court. So I know I myself am really curious about what happened. I think I've been trying to picture it in my mind. I know a lot of people have done the same. Can you give us kind of the Reader's Digest version of, of what happened and what you see as legally problematic for your client? So, you know, taking everybody back to 2017 and 2018 when this happened, nobody knew nor really cared who Joe Exotic was. He just ran a, a sleepy little sanctuary in Oklahoma that you had to try to get to. It wasn't even, you know, off the off the beaten path. It was off of the beaten, beaten path. And so there you go. There's GW Zoo. And so uh, Joe was uh, an enemy to PETA and, and Carol Baskin. Uh, Joe, Joe had this show that he, that he went on daily, uh, for hours daily oftentimes, and recorded rants and raves and what was going on with the zoo and also some positive stuff, some of his charity work. And you know, within that, there were five or six clips where he, he, he took out his enemy. You know, he threatened her. He, he, he did it as character Joe Exotic. Um, and, you know, there's a there's a series of emails dating back to 2014, 2016, where Carol Baskin was e emailing the federal agent that was involved here saying we need to infiltrate Joe's bar. You know what he's doing to the animals isn't right. And and she was after him in every way possible. You've heard about the trademark lawsuit. There was there, you know, these two were were Hatfield and McCoy's of the tiger industry. And they were, you know, out to to make each other look like the bad person. And ultimately the feds got involved. You know how the, how the, the power that the United States government and the FBI and the fish and wildlife have. And so they just ran roughshod over, over Joe and his, his public defenders, um, you know, starting with the animal charges and making him look like an animal abuser. And then within the same trial, which we thought was, was kind of bad form and unusual, but within the same trial then, then got into the murder for hire plot, uh, which the, you know, the core was that, that Joe and this, this worker at the zoo, Alan Glover had this bitter, bitter feud, both wanted to get rid of each other. And 
ultimately it somehow resolved in Joe offering Alan Glover $3,000 to go kill his mortal enemy, which would be the most trustworthy thing you could do with somebody that you don't trust. But, um, you know, Alan since admitted that he committed perjury uh, related to that narrative, because at that point, Joe was vulnerable. Uh, Joe had become like the Walmart of the animal industry. He admits he, he bought and sold uh, animals. Um, he tried to stay within the confines of the federal law, but it was it was gray. And so they, they wanted Joe down. They took Joe down. And um, that takes the viewer kind of through Tiger King 1, uh, where he got convicted with nobody really paying attention uh, with public defenders that, that, and I respect public defenders all over the country, but you know, that, that really didn't put up much of a fight here. And a judge that, that not only was on Joe's criminal case, but two of his civil cases with Carol Baskin. So, you know, that was a little much for him to know all about Joe and have, have, have been, you know, Joe didn't have good lawyers through any of this. Um, and, you know, Carol did, and PETA did, and, and the United States government surely did. And so they, they, they convicted him. Um, he's, he sat in prison, his lawyers appealed, uh, and the, the sentencing was vacated in, I believe, July of 2021. And we still wait the re resentencing. It's supposed to be this month, or right. January. Right, John. I wanted to ask you about that because he made news with an announcement about his prostate cancer treatments and wanting to delay them. Uh, make sense of this for us, please. Certainly. So, you know, prostate cancer is something that Joe wants to educate the public about when he, when he gets out. Uh, it affects so many men, they, they don't, you know, men are not inclined to go get that test done. Uh, it's an uncomfortable test, I can tell you. Um, but it's, it's an important test. So Joe was diagnosed with prostate cancer uh, in mid, mid to late 2021. Uh, he'd had a battle with it before. And crazily enough, as the story goes, the morning Tiger King 2 is set to air uh, November 17th, um, he's rushed on a private plane to a different facility, now moved to uh, Butner Federal Medical Center in North Carolina, which is the more um, aggressive cancer treatment federal prison in the country. And he's kept in quarantine, kept in the shoe, finally sees a doctor uh, who offers him three treatments, um, surgery, uh, radiation or, uh, just monitor it because it was, it was at a borderline, a borderline level and they pushed the radiation on him. Next thing we know, we get an email from the U S attorney's office saying that he had elected radiation and that they needed to postpone sentencing six to eight weeks. We got a legal call with Joe and said, wait, wait, wh what? Um, and we got him some second opinions, including Dr. Drew Pinsky, you know, Dr. Drew that we've we've all seen on TV Dr. for Drew, years. Right. Yeah. Doc, Love so, Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. Great, great. And, and he's a he's actually a survivor of prostate cancer as well. And so I sat on a call, uh, one of my legal calls, we had Dr. Drew call in. And so it was Dr. Drew, me and Joe Exotic. I was like, where, you know, where's my life come that I'm, <laughs> I'm moderating? You're doing great things, John time. Phillips. No, you really and are. So, so. Um, I got to grow the beard back so people recognize me. <laughs> I recognized you when I saw Tiger King Part 2. Um, and, my, and we want to talk to me. your kids doing how funny. Um, John, I'm being told we're going to squeeze in a break, but you're so kind okay. to give us your time on this New Year's Eve. Uh, when we come back, lots more for you. Attorney John Phillips, we're going to continue the conversation about his client, Tiger King, Joe Exotic. It's next. Welcome back to Court TV Live on this special edition of programming on New Year's Eve. I'm your host, Julie Grant, and we have a very special guest on the program today, Joe Exotic's attorney, John Phillips. He practices in Jacksonville, Florida. He is no stranger to high-profile cases. He's a friend of Court TV. And, John, I have to say, I was so happy to see you in Tiger King Part 2. I was watching it with my fiancé, and as soon as you came on, he was saying, oh, do you know that attorney? And I said, yes, I do know that attorney. He's awesome. 
Collins, John Phillips, and uh, it was really great to see you and uh, another person I know in that uh, documentary. Our Vinnie Politan is in there. They use some court TV clips uh, in the doc, which is really great to see. Uh, but you've been very busy advocating for your client. And we talked a lot about the, the history, what happened before he found fame. He found fame in prison. And now what is he hoping for when he's resentenced? You know, Vinny, Vinny and I actually share the same birthday. He's, he helped oh. me get my start <laughs> over 10 years ago in media, and I really appreciate it. You, you know, Joe just wants an end to this. He, he's waited seven months on the resentencing. We're, we're three years now because of how the criminal justice system slows things down uh, for his Rule 33 motions and motions for ineffective assistance of counsel that really need to come right at or after resentencing. So he just he just wants people to to understand what's going on. You know, he, here he was prosecuted for, for improperly caging animals and has been in solitary confinement for over 100, 150 days in the past year. It, it, it's, it, I mean, the irony here of, of, of what's happened to him and the, the mistreatment of, of Joe Exotic with cancer, uh, you know, getting, getting justice delayed is justice denied, you know, is something that, that, you know, even Molly Palmer with who, who, who's regular on court TV is helping us with the, with the resentencing. And, you know, we, we want to expand this legal team and, and help Joe, you know, get a voice and get out because, you know, 2022 is the year of the tiger starting February 1st. We're hoping it's it's the year that gets justice for Joe Exotic. John, we want to play a clip for all of our viewers from that part two of the series where he's in prison and and talking about what he what he's he's found for himself. Go sit in a cage with your animal for a week. I mean, when I left the zoo and I sent my chimpanzees to the sanctuary in Florida and imagine what my chimpanzees went through for 18 years, uh, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. Mm, so he's found fame and then also really kind of found himself, huh? Done a lot of self-reflection, it seems. John, tell us, you know him better than most. Uh, what don't people know about Joe Exotic? So Joe wrote a book in prison, Plug Plug. No and kidding. And in it, he, ta he talks about, you know, his life as a former police officer and, and how he just wanted to help people and help animals. And certainly there's a point if you're the person on the street that brings in so many strays that you have 100 strays, you know, at some point that person goes from, you know, heartfelt to maybe a burden on the system. And, you know, Joe did that with people. Joe did that with animals. And, and it, it did become too much. And, you know, America really has to ask about all of the people that surround themselves with big tigers, you know, why they need to do that. But, but Joe has a big heart. Um, he's Uncle Joe to my kids. He, he, he spoke to him on on Christmas Eve and in Christmas morning, they opened up, you know, gift cards from Uncle Joe. And he's just, he's a sweet guy. Uh, what documentary filmmaking does sometimes is unfortunate. Um, you know, everybody has way more of a 360 degree uh, personality. And sometimes you only see what producers want you to see. But, you know, Joe's a good guy. Regardless, anybody deserves a full and fair treatment under the, under the justice, full and fair. And so, you know, justice delayed, it's that Dr. King quote, I'll say it again, justice delayed is justice denied. You know, seven months waiting on a sentencing hearing, um, you know, all the time that it took for the appeal. You know, if America wants, wants, you know, more of Tiger King or less of Tiger King, you know, the quickest way is to, to get Joe out and and just be aware of what goes on in our criminal justice system. I, I as a as a former, you know, mainly civil guy, I, I, it, Molly Palmer has has educated me heavily, as have some of the Innocence Project people on on what's just going on with our inmates, um, and our wrongfully convicted inmates. It's it's sad. John Phillips, we could talk to you all day. We really could. And there's so much more uh, legally that we know is, is, is ahead for your client. And so hopefully we can continue the conversation. I know you'll keep us posted on everything. Uh, just want to say thank you so much for making time for us on this New Year's Eve. Happy New Year to you and your family and every good wish with all of these cases you have coming up in 2022.